Hello and welcome to this tutorial. We're going to talk about access lists and sequence numbers. Now so far we know that your standard numbered access list or your extended numbered access list did not enable you to delete a single line. You either deleted the, the whole thing or nothing at all. And then we talked about the named access list which did enable you to delete single lines without deleting the entire access list. Well that was great and I think the numbered access list got jealous because after a while the editing options on a numbered access list were upgraded. They were enhanced. And this enhancement comes in the form of a sequence number. So basically a sequence number is used with an access list, a numbered access list, in order to identify each statement within the access list. So there's a number. Each one gets its own number. Now, because you can now reference a statement within an access list by that sequence number, we're now enabled to delete individual statements, just like a named access list. Also, the sequence number allows us to add a new statement anywhere within the access list. So you know by default if you add a new line to an access list, it's placed at the bottom. Well now, by referencing a sequence number, we can put that new statement anywhere. We could put it at the top, in the middle, second to last, or last. We could do whatever we, whatever we want. So we have a lot more flexibility now. So let's start off by taking a look at the structure of an access list when we create it with a sequence number. So it begins by using the same command that we just learned for the named access list. In other words, the IP access list command. So nothing new. And then we have to, again, state if we want this to be an extended or a standard access list. And then comes the difference. Instead of listing a name, we just list a number. And this number will identify the entire access list. Now once we do this, we're put into access list configuration mode, just like before. And then we go ahead and create all of our permit and deny statements. So, so far, everything's the same. And if we wanted to go ahead and then apply this access list, we would still use the IP access group command and reference this particular access list and then state whether it's inbound or outbound. All of that remains the same. However, when we look at the access list and we edit it, that's when the differences come in and that's when we see the sequence numbers. So let's go ahead and jump on a router and actually do this. Okay. So let's jump into configuration mode and we'll start off by issuing the IP access list command. We'll want this to be an extended access list to take advantage of all of the uh, great matching features of the extended access list. And now this time we go ahead and we enter a number. Now if we take a look at our parameters here, you can see we still have the option to make this a named access list, but because we've already said this is an extended, if we do choose a number, the router already knows the two ranges that we have to choose from, just like a regular extended access list. So we just choose a number. And upon hitting enter, you can see the command prompt changes again. And now we are in access list configuration mode. So everything we do from here on out will be statements for access list 101. So let's create a few statements. Okay, just a few. And now let's actually take a look at our access list. The command you want to issue is show IP access list. And look at that. It tells you it's an extended IP access list and it lists the number for you. And then we have our three statements that we created. But at the beginning of each statement is your sequence number. And those were added automatically for us. And they run sequentially. So if we had added 10 more, they would have just kept going. 40, 50, 60, 70, so on and so forth. So those are the sequence numbers. Now why are they useful? Well, we're still in access list configuration mode. Let's say all of a sudden we, we decide, you know what, we don't want 192.168.1.1 to have telnet access to anything. All we have to do 
is issue the no command like we did earlier when we talked about named access lists, but this time we have to do even less work. All we do is reference the sequence number of the line that we want to delete. So no 20, because 20 is the sequence number of the second line. Now, if we take a look, you could see it's gone. There's no line 20. That's very easy. So that's the delete uh, benefit of using uh, sequence numbers. Now let's go ahead and see how easy it is to insert a line anywhere we want. For instance, let's say I want to add a line to the very beginning. So there we go. And let's take a look now at our new access list. And you can see sequence 5 is now at the top. So when I added this line, the first thing I did was specify the sequence number. And that would determine where in the access list it would be inserted. I could have chosen 15, I could have chosen 35, and I could have chosen the, the number 4, the number 3, the number 2 the number 11, any number you want. You can, it's generally a good idea to leave some room between your, your statements, usually in increments of five. That way, if you ever need to come back and add something, you have some room to do it. Okay? Okay, let's summarize what we covered. We now know that we can create a numbered access list which has sequence numbers, and because of that, we can edit it remove individual lines or insert individual lines anywhere we want. And we do this by using the IP access list command, the same one used to create a named access list. However, instead of a name, we put a number. Now the sequence numbers are added automatically when we create an access list, or if we wanted to, we could add them manually. We use the sequence numbers when we, when we want to edit the access list. So when we want to delete a line, or when we want to insert a line uh, into a specific position into the access list, we use a reference number to do that. And then a great way to confirm your configuration, besides looking at the running configuration, is to issue the show IP access list command. And this will tell you how your access list looks, and you'll see the sequence numbers listed next to each statement in the access list. Okay, so that's it. That is how to configure a numbered access list with sequence numbers. Thanks for watching.